Hello, my name is Liz and I'm the DBS Administrator for Oxfordshire Youth. This film is going to be about filling in a DBS application form for the applicant. So before you start watching the film, you need to get one of these forms in front of you so that you can follow it along with me as we go through it. So you've got a job that means that you need to complete a DBS check. And you've been given one of these forms and you're probably thinking what an awful lot of horrible small print on the front page. I would encourage you to engage a little bit with the front page first because it gives you some useful tips for avoiding common mistakes. It does say use black ink throughout. DBS seem quite unable to process blue ink so do make sure you're using a black pen. Fill in all the sections that are marked in yellow. If you do make a mistake, don't panic. You can just put a neat line through it and write the correct answer. But take a few minutes, have a look through the front page and it will help you to avoid some mistakes. So if you're the applicant, you need to open the form and start working your way through all the obligatory questions and you'll see each thing that you must answer is marked in yellow. The first thing that people generally slip up on is question three. Having filled in their title and their surname quite confidently, they give their first name and then they think, mm, I've never really liked my middle name much. I think I may just leave it off here. Please don't do that. Please do include your full name on this form. So however little you like your middle names, please do give them all because the whole purpose of this form is to prove your personal identity and make sure that someone else's records are not looked up that are attached to your name. So you put your name in. If you've ever been known by another name, you just fill it in on these sections um, five, six, seven. If you've had a different surname, for example, you put your surname in and the four names that you were known by at that time. If you've ever had a professional name or if you have ever been adopted and changed your name, if you've been married and changed your name, or if you simply fancied a new name, just give the dates by which you were known as those names and make sure that the dates all match up you'll see that you're asked to give the month and the year for these dates. So don't worry if you don't know the specific day that your name changed. Uh, date of birth is question 14 and your gender is question 15. If you've got any queries about question 15, get in touch with me um, because DBS is very good at dealing with people's changing identities. Questions 16 and 17, obvious town and country of birth, not county, country of birth. Questions 18 and 19 are not obligatory. You don't have to give your email address or your contact phone number, but many times I have found it useful when people have put them there because they've enabled me to sort out queries. But that's your confidential information. You don't have to share it if you don't wish to. On question 20, do you have a national insurance number? If you say yes, because you have a national insurance number, then you must give your national insurance number at question 21 and give your actual national insurance number, not something that you think might be acceptable. It's got to be the actual number. I have known people make something up and it doesn't wash, I'm so sorry. If you have a driving license, even if it's only a provisional license, the answer to question 22 will be yes. That is if it's a UK driving license. And if you've answered yes, you must give the full number. And when you give your driving license number, you'll be glad that you have given your full four names at question three, because your driving license number reveals whether you have a middle name. And if you haven't given it, DBS will write to me and ask me again, what's your driving license number and what is your full name?
Now, do you hold a valid passport? It doesn't say, do you hold a UK passport? It's just a valid passport. So if you have any passport at all, the answer is yes. And you need to give your passport number, the nationality of the passport, and the country of issue. That doesn't mean the country where you picked up your passport, but the country that issued your passport. If you have more than one passport, and one of them is a UK one, it'd probably be quite handy to give the UK passport here. Question 30. Do you have a Scottish vetting and barring number? Quite a lot of people think, I don't know what a Scottish vetting and barring number is, so I'm not going to answer that question. However, you will see that it's marked in yellow, so you do actually have to come off the fence and answer yes or no. Chances are, if you don't know what this question is about, the answer is no, so kindly put a no. It actually refers to another form of DBS checking and you would have had it processed by a Scottish office and you probably would know if you had had it before. So the address that you give at section B will be the address to which your DBS certificate is posted out. So if you actually have more than one address, and I realise for students in particular that this may be an issue, um, just decide where you want that form to be sent out to and put that address there. And you need to put the month and the year when you moved into that address at question 37. Question 36 says the country. Now, you may think it's extremely obvious that the address you've given is in the UK. I might think so too, but if you don't put the country there, DBS will query it. So just play the game, go along, put your country in. We need five solid years of addresses. So if you have lived in the same address for over five years, great. If you've lived in any number of different places, then we need to have them all listed. And the dates that you give mustn't have any gaps in between. Now for students in particular, this is quite an issue. Um, because if you have been at college and lived in a different hall or rented address each year and gone home during the holidays, that's going to add up to quite a lot. So if you haven't got room on here, for all the addresses for five years, you need to print out a continuation sheet and you can get that easily by Googling DBS continuation sheet. It's a two page form and you need to fill in both sides. So side one will have your name, your full name, your date of birth, which will identify you obviously. And side one is used for if you have any further names that you've been used for, used by that you didn't have room for here. And side two is for listing addresses. So you need to have both sides filled in. If you were a student, then there is room on that continuation form to say, I was a student and give the years when you were studying. And then that will make it really clear why you've got all these different addresses. If you've ever been homeless, had a period where you had no fixed address, then don't worry about the address, just put the town or city where you were homeless and put a note to say homeless in, and that will be fine. Again, all we're looking for is five years of continuous accountability. If you've got any questions while you're filling this in and you're thinking, I think I'm sure, but I'm not quite sure, I'm really happy to answer questions, so do get in touch. Section D says do not complete, which is a pity because we could have fitted another address in there, but DBS I'm sure has its own reasons for that. Section E tends to make people feel a little bit uncomfortable because this is the bit where you declare whether you have any convictions, cautions, reprimands or final warnings which would not be filtered in line with current guidance. What that's asking is, is there anything that is going to come up which will be shown on your certificate, which might make you feel a bit uncomfortable or embarrassed, something about your criminal past. If there is something and you're not sure whether it's going to come up, 
I would suggest you do two things. Put yes in the box, but also have a conversation with the person who's asking you to fill in this form. Um, because it's better to have an honest discussion about what might come up and whether it has an impact on the job for which you're applying. Better to do that in advance rather than wait till the certificate comes and it all feels a little bit awkward. Better to be prepared. So if you, the applicant, have now filled in these two pages, you can sign the box at the bottom and date your signature. And the next thing you've got to do is find three documents that will prove your identity.